Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna be spending some more quality time with what is quickly becoming my favorite project truck that I own, the GMT 400 Big Block Suburban. Now, last time we just finished up the different axle swap on the rear, we converted to a Dana 70, mainly because it's wider, but also because we got disc brakes along the way and a limited slip, both things that the 14 bolt full floater did not have. Uh, but anyway, yeah, today we're gonna be addressing one of the most common complaints about these big block Vortex, and that's a long cranking or a hard to start condition whenever the engine is warm. Now, I'll drop a video clip in right here. And that just kind of shows you how long the engine has to turn over before it'll fire up after the engine has been warmed up. And it's just, it's not right. And the problem has to do with the injector. So today we're gonna to be replacing the injectors and the fuel pressure regulator, as those are generally the accepted fix for this problem. Now the L29 454, the Vortex 7400, was used between like 96 and 2000 in these GMT 400, 2500 and 3500 series trucks. And they have this really cool intake manifold. It's a cool uh, two-piece design with a long runner for lots of low RPM torque. But the problem is the injectors are buried underneath the top half of the plenum on a single fuel rail that kind of has injectors splitting off at different angles to feed each side of the engine. And the regulator is mounted on the back of the rail way back there kind of buried underneath the distributor. So to access it, obviously, we need to take the top half of the intake manifold off. I'm hoping I don't have to touch the AC compressor, but I might need to just flip that out of the way. We've got a few odds and ends to take off, but we'll get to that in just a second. First, we got to talk about what parts we're putting back in because I didn't want to go with just another stock replacement set of injectors. I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to upgrade. I believe the official horsepower rating for this engine comes in right at 290 horses, which is kind of sad when you think about you've got a 7.4 liter engine only producing, well, less than 300 horses. But the plan is to do a whole lot better than that with some bolt-on upgrades. You know, I plan to do a camshaft, long tube headers, hopefully sometime this summer. And then a little bit later, I also want to do some sort of forced induction. So uh, we need a bigger injector anyway to support some of those future modifications. So this is a perfect opportunity to not only replace, but to upgrade. So the injector that I'm going with is a fast 36 pound per hour injector. Now, the one reason I chose this specific injector is because it's actually based on, or it pretty much is an OE injector. GM would have used this in like the Pontiac Grand Prix GTP, that was the supercharged V6 application, but also there was another car they had, and this is, I had never heard of it before I started doing injector research, but I believe it was called the ASA or maybe the ASM Corvette. Pretty sure it was like a track only car you could buy. It was an LS1, maybe an LS6, but it had a little bit more power than stock and it had these injectors in it, 36 pound per hour. And one of the reasons why a stock injector was so important to me is because you can find stock injector data. Now, when I bought my FIC 1000cc injectors, they come with a spreadsheet that has all the GM data for whatever ECU you're putting them in. Now, these injectors from FAST, FAST doesn't actually give you injector data that will go into a factory computer, but remember, they came with factory applications like the GTP Grand Prix and the ASA Corvette, and I found a calibration file for both, and it matches up perfectly with the 0411 swap that I have done on my big block Suburban. Now, if you are gonna be putting bigger injectors into your black box Suburban, um, you just have to keep that in mind. You will have to do some tuning on that. Um, I believe HP tuners will support a 98 and 99 black box PCM, but not the 96 and 97s. Uh, there's some crossover in there where HP tuners does support some and not others. But anyway, um, if you're gonna be doing any performance upgrades on your big block Suburban I, or truck or anything, I do recommend an 0411 swap. Um, go check out my playlist on the 0411. Basically, this is an LS1 style PCM and allows you a lot more tuning options as a faster processor and all that good stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is a bit of a sidetrack. We're going 36 pound per hour injectors and these won't support like a supercharger on this big block or not at the power levels I wanna run, but uh, the 39 pound or 36 pound per hour injector should support somewhere around 450 horsepower or so, kind of depends on a lot of different things. Uh, so I figured that'll get me by in the meantime with my bolt-ons, you know, the camshaft, the headers, uh, maybe something different in the intake department. Uh, but anyway, for now, this will get me on the road. It'll work perfectly with a stock engine and it'll make it a whole lot easier to start up. So let's get that intake manifold torn off.
So we've got all the tear down complete and the cleanup work is done, which means we're ready to start putting new parts in and put this thing back together. Now, I've actually never worked on a 7.4 Vortec before, but everything is fairly straightforward and fairly simple. Just take your time if this is a new platform for you and don't break any wires or clips or you know try to yank the intake off before you make sure that there might be something connected on the backside. Um, so anyway, it's fairly straightforward. Um, like I mentioned, the fuel rail does sit right down in the middle of the intake. I already cleaned up the little injector bosses down below, scraped some gunk and grease out of the center of the valley there. Um, try to plug the distributor hole if you can, that way nothing kind of falls down in there. Um, other than that, we're ready to go back together. The fuel rail is a little bit tricky if you're tackling for this first time like I am. Um, this is plastic and I have seen online a couple of, or a lot of people actually will break off these little tabs right here. There's eight of them and those are actually what hold the injector retainers in place. Um, so just what I did is I took a little screwdriver and um, one of these guys here and just had one on each hand and I'm able to get all of these out without damaging the clips and without damaging the fuel rail which is perfect because we now can put it all back together in one piece. Uh, the pressure regulator that's fairly simple just make sure you get all the old pieces out it should look like that um, there's a little screen on the end this is the new one but make sure the screen and the inner o-ring come out um, they do provide you with the snap ring and this external retainer i think this is just because this regulator works on many different applications i don't think you actually need both uh, but we'll see also make sure on your old injectors I always like to line them up and make sure every single one of them has an O-ring on the bottom and on the top just to make sure there's nothing left either in the rail or in the intake manifold. And then finally, this is just something I was like 99% sure it would work, but I just wanted to verify that these injectors have the same exact dimensions in terms of height, in terms of the connector, which they're both the EV1 style. And then finally, they both have the little groove right there that the injector little retainer clip kind of goes in something like that anyhow um, so we know all the parts are going to fit everything is cleaned up and now we're ready to start putting it back together and get this fuel rail back in the 454.
So the Suburban is 100% put back together and we just got back from a test drive and I did a data log, which we'll go over in a minute, um, but that'll tell us whether or not this uh, injector data that I found is correct for these injectors. Uh, but anyhow, there were a few things that I had to kind of tweak on the way putting this back together. And the first has to do with the retainer that holds the injector to the fuel rail. On the stock injectors, you can see there's a groove cut all the way around the circumference of the injector, that guy right there below the blue cap. Um, but on the new white injectors, that groove doesn't go all the way around, it's just like a little slit on each side. So basically that meant the retaining clip for the injector could not go all the way in and that slightly interfered with the EV1 connector or the electrical plug for the injector. So all I had to do there, um, if you could picture the injector clip looks sort of like that, a horseshoe shape. All I really had to do is take my grinder, just make a little extra room and I uh, kind of rounded it, but you kind of get the picture. I just made a little extra room down there in the bottom of the horseshoe and that allowed it to plug all the way onto the injector and hold it into the rail properly. Uh, from there, the injectors plug right back into the engine, um, new fuel pressure regulator obviously in there as well. Um, and then from that point on, the reassembly was more or less straightforward. I did throw in a new distributor cap and rotor uh, with the brass terminals because the one that was in there had the aluminum terminals and they tend to corrode and wear out rather quickly. I also threw in a new oil pressure sending unit and a pigtail harness for that. It was pretty well chafed and the gauge read really, really wonky. Like sometimes the oil pressure would, like at idle, it would be reading it like 30, then it would go all the way up like to peg the gauge. So anyway, we threw a new uh, sending unit in that. And then also I wasted probably like two hours just fixing a few things that somebody who had been in here before kind of messed up and forgot to put back together. The transmission was out at some point and there was three bolts missing on top of the bell housing kind of important. Um, so I had to put those back in. It involved moving the dipstick for the transmission, bending the tab, because they just kind of reefed that thing over to the side. There was an engine ground that was missing back there. I mean, I get it, all that stuff is hard to connect if you have the transmission out, but it just, it bugs the crap out of me when guys will put something back together and not put it back together the right way. So anyway, uh, we fixed all that. And then the heat shield down below um, on these OBS trucks, there's a little heat shield tube, I guess you could call it, that goes between the exhaust manifold and allows the harness to kind of pass from the back of the engine down below the starter area. Anyhow, that wasn't even close to where it should be. Um, and there's another wire harness retainer in there that I had to spend a bunch of time just to get it connected. And it's a pain in the butt, but it should be connected because that stuff protects your wires from like melting on the exhaust manifold or rubbing through on something that's sharp and metal. So anyhow, yeah, if you take something apart, make sure you put it back together the right way. Nothing bugs me more than that. Anyhow, um, after I messed with all that, the rest of the engine put back together just fine. Um, I did start it up once just to kind of see how it would run with the stock uh, 19 pound per hour injector data in the computer basically before I made any changes and it stumbled really badly because it's running very rich because you've got well basically twice the fuel that you need um, because the pulse width hasn't been modified yet. So anyhow, um, as soon as I flashed in the new injector data with the 36 pound injectors, um, fired right up, the thing ran smoothly. Then we went for our drive. I did take a data log. Um, right now, it should still be pretty warm here. I mean, we've got 170, 150, you know, it's, it's pretty warm in here still. So um, it's been sitting for 20 minutes, maybe. We'll give it a start and see if it cranks over like it should. Um, because now is about the time where it would have that really, really long cranking time and it would stumble when it first fires up. So let's give it a shot here. Just so you can see the dashboard. So it fires up. No check engine light, ABS light, all that stuff goes off, just a seatbelt light. Idles perfectly, so I am happy. So the next thing that we'll go over real quick is the data log because um, I was I was pretty sure that the injector data that I grabbed or I found online was gonna be spot on. Uh, but just to verify that, you do a data log and you check things like fuel trims to make sure that they're, you know, if your fuel trims, say the short or the long terms are like plus or minus 25 or 30%, you have a pretty good idea your injector data is not spot on, you know, provided the rest of the tune is correct. And before my injector, uh, or my fuel trims were pretty much where they should be. So I expect the same thing now that we've changed the injector data. Anyhow, um, HP tuners, VCM scanner. This is kind of what we look at. I have, and I'll put a screen capture on here. Anyhow, long-term fuel trims, these are positive two to minus two, minus three. So this is spot on. Uh, short-term fuel trims, these are usually a little bit further apart. 
Um, let's see, we've got negative two, positive five, a couple of positive sevens and eights. Um, overall though, I would say this injector data is exactly where it needs to be. And I probably just need to make a few slight tweaks to the VE table, because if you remember back when I did the 0411 swap, um, there was no VE table from a Vortex 7.4 in an 0411 computer. So the VE table that was on there was adapted from an 8.1. So anyway, um, that's just to say that I'm actually really happy with how the thing drives. And the other cool thing worth mentioning is injector duty cycle. So if you can see down here on this third trace, I log duty cycle and under wide open throttle, and let's see that second gear, third gear stayed in a little bit longer. I mean, we've got 41, maybe 42% injector duty cycle, which basically means we have a lot of fuel capacity left on the table to make a whole lot more horsepower. So now that the engine's running where it should be, we're ready to start throwing some hard parts at this thing to make some extra horsepower. I've got to say thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, don't forget to click that like button, click the subscribe button. All that stuff helps the channel grow. And check back in another couple of days because we have something cool happening with the ugly truck, the Turbo 8.1 Big Block. I've got a different spring for the wastegate, so we're going to turn it up and see how it likes it. Catch you next time, guys.